Right, hello guys, welcome to a, another video for the channel. This one is on the Royal Rumble. By now I'm gathering people have watched it, people have seen it, people know what's gone on, what's happened, and it was a very interesting, fun rumble for me. I thoroughly enjoyed it. Um, so let's just dive straight in and get to my own personal review and ideas and thoughts on the Royal Rumble. Um, if you enjoy this video, give me a like, comment your opinion and um, subscribe to my channel. Uh, also follow me on Twitch, which will be very much appreciated. Um, dive in first match, which is the Men's Royal Rumble. I thought it was weird that this was the opener. I would have opened with the women's personally, but this is what they did. Um, big, big surprise number one, number two in Gunther and... Seamus, who, well, you know, as expected, just battered the crap out of each other, and it was fun to watch. Um, Rumble trundles along, you get Drew McIntyre coming in to team up with Seamus, which they did throughout a lot of the Rumble. Um, you kind of building up to a Brock Lesnar and Brock comes in and he's cleaning out and he's battering people and he's throwing people out and the next entrant after him is Lashley and you think you know they're going to have a bit of a slobber knocker you know beat each other up but the surprising thing that happens is Lashley chucks Lesnar out Obviously, they're building towards their um, Mania match, which I'm guessing is going to happen. And, you know, like Lesnar's angry and he's trashing things and he's not happy and he storms off. Lashley doesn't really last that much longer after that. Um, and also, at this point, you've still got Sheamus and you've still got Gunther. Um, we push along, push along towards the end of the rumble. You get all the Judgment Day are in there and they're teaming up and saving each other. And weirdly, apparently, Rey Mysterio was supposed to be in it, but he got injured on a show before the rumble. So when it comes time for him to come out, nothing. And then the next entrant is Dominic and he comes out with a mask and rips the mask and you know really good heel work from uh, Dominic his character's fantastic and honestly I can't really I can't really fault him he's He's not that great in the ring, but his character work is so good that you kind of push past it, and he's he's definitely better as a heel than a babyface. And then it trundles along, and all of a sudden, another surprise entrant, someone coming back from injury, is Edge. Edge comes in, takes out the Judgment Day, chucks Finn and Damien Priest out. And then he ends up getting eliminated himself. Because. Uh, thingy. Um, Damien Priest and Finn Balor. They end up. Battering him. And chucking him out. And not like, helping eliminate him. And then it's just. Dominic standing tall on his own. Um. And then Edge starts beating the crap out of him down the ramp. And then Rhea Ripley comes out and takes out Edge. 
and then all of a sudden Beth Phoenix just turns up and takes out Edge no, takes out, sorry, Rhea Ripley with a spear kind of injures her a bit you know um, and then we carry on with the rumble people are flying out left, right and centre it, it was it was a really good rumble there was a lot of um, a lot of back and forth between people like something one of my friends pointed out that the, um, the fact that Seamus and like McIntyre they were just they just kept chilling in the corner and watching people fight and like laughing and smiling as they're beating each other up and then getting involved after a while and then it gets down to the wire and we're like 30th entrant who's going to be the last entrant isn't it going to be a big surprise and it's Cody Rhodes um Cody comes down has a decent rumble and then it ends up coming down between Gunther and Cody Rhodes Cody Rhodes is kind of getting his butt kicked a bit and they have like a mini match at the end of the rumble it was like about 5-10 minutes and it was really good They've got, they seem to have really great chemistry a lot there's a bit where um Cody goes for the disaster kick when Gunther's on the apron and he jumps up, jumps off the corner, goes to kick him, and Gunther just leathers him with a bloody clothesline and it's fantastic. And then inevitably Cody wins. Now the problem me and my me and my, one of my other friends, Mike, were talking about it. Our issue with it is, is that people are more on Gunther's side than Cody's side. Because at the end of the day, you've got Gunther, who went from number one all the way to the last two. His performance was fantastic. And even even he was it, I think he broke the record. Even when he was in there like an hour and ten, an hour and fifteen minutes at the end with Cody, he was still having a quality match. You wouldn't have thought he'd just been in a rumble for an hour. And you get Cody Rhodes who comes in at number 30 and wins it all. And it's just kind of like, shouldn't you have Cody first? And then his story from beginning to end is like this big elaborate story. And like people would be more behind Cody because of this. And I just don't think they were behind him as much as possible. I will discuss Cody a bit more at the towards the end of, not at the end, but like towards the end, because obviously you've got to wait for the uh, WWE Undisputed Universal World Heavyweight title match or whatever it's called at the end. Um, so yeah, that's kind of a bit of thoughts on the Rumble. I would have give the Rumble, you know, the men's Rumble, give it maybe 8.5 out of 10. It could have been a bit better. There weren't many surprises, but they made use of the wrestlers that they had which I thought was brilliant um, so we move on and unfortunately the second match of the night is the Mountain Dew Pitch Black match between LA Knight and Bray Wyatt now I've got a few opinions on Bray Wyatt there's not really a review of the match that you can really give nothing good really happened it was just a back and forth match um i did like the, the kind of had like this the lights were down but it kind of illu- it was like illuminated things and you had la night it was in these bright Ill- illuminated bloody yellow gear which was the best thing about the match to be honest uh there was a cool spot where they'd put the steps by uh one of the announce tables 
Well, it's the announce table, they have one now, don't they? By the announce table, and LA Knight runs up it, and then puts Bray Wyatt through it. But apart from that, it was rubbish. And then Bray wins. Not much else to say. I would have gave it like maybe a 3 out of 10. It just wasn't a very good match at all. And I just didn't see the point in it. Um, then at the end of the match, uh, Bray kind of like turns and he's got this new mask on. Because he had like a... He had like some face paint thing, and then he's got this new mask on. And LA Knight's panicking. He grabs a stick, and like it was like a yellow and pink. I think it was kendo stick. It was like it was lighting up, and he was like smacking Bray with it. And Bray's new cell in it, and he chases him through the crowd, and they get to a point where he's like hitting him, and then Bray gets the manable claw on him. He's lay flat, and then there's like. It's like kind of up the top. There's like a a le- like a ledge, like a ramp thing, and a uh, Uncle Howdy shows up, and then he kind of does like a coffin drop off, which he misses La Knight, but La Knight kind of rolls to suggest that he hit him, and then there's like fire going off and flames, and Bray stood at the edge and he's just stood there, and then you've got a bit up the top, and you've got like all the little characters that he's got, and they're all like there, moving their heads like this, stop watching. They need to pull the trigger on this thing, they need to, something big needs to happen, like they need to show who Cap. Captain Howdy, Uncle Howdy is, or unmask his little friends and like start kicking off the thing because I think it's getting a bit, it's getting a bit dull and a bit samey. And like all he's done is like Bray comes out and cuts a promo and oh this and that, and then Uncle Howdy shows up and he's like oh oh Bray, you you're not who you say you are, and it's. They just need to push it forward because it kind of rolls into the next match, which both these matches just suffered coming after the men's rumble. I know they didn't want to put two rumbles together, but you go into the Bianca and Alexa match, and both the Bray, LA Knight, and Alexa Belair matches just seemed. Like they were put in as a way to further the Bray Wyatt storyline. Because Alexa Bianca, there's nothing to set another 3 out of 10. It's a, it's a solid match. And then Bianca wins and disappears. And then there's the show on the screen, like a vignette thing. And it's kind of like all the stuff that Alexa's done when she was aligned with Bray and. And Alexa's just literally sat in the ring like, oh, oh, watching this thing. And it's, it's just rubbish. Like, they need to be like, Alexa just needs to turn. Go back to Bray. And then they can push the storyline on. Because, to be honest... Actually, no, I'll talk about... I'll talk, again, it's something like the Bray thing. I'll talk about after the main event... Uh, women's Rumble, decent. I've just filled with a lot of people that are like coming out, and I'm like, who? Who's that? Don't even know who that is. It, they just don't seem to have the star power for the women. Like you had like Damage Control, because I think Bailey came in quite early. You had Damage Control, and then Becky came in, and Becky eliminated Damage Control, and then Bailey eliminated. Becky and then Liv eliminated Bailey and then they brawled into the crowd and stuff and this is another one um, Rhea Ripley was number one and she was the Iron Woman she lasted all the way until the end and won which you know kind of thought that Rhea was going to win it because she's been dominating she's been like body slamming grown men and beating them up and stuff and it's like they've got to push her at some point I think she's gonna she'll get to Mania and she'll beat between Bianca and Charlotte in it 
I don't know, she'll beat one of them. But yeah, just the women's was just, just plodded along. Like, you didn't even have Charlotte there. Obviously, she's the SmackDown champion, she. But she weren't even there. And there was a, there was a, a really good point, though, um, that Corey Graves made. It was like, I can't remember, there was... Someone was trying to eliminate someone. And I think it was Liv Morgan ran over. And instead of trying to eliminate the person that was currently could have been eliminated, she started to try and eliminate the person, trying to eliminate the person. And he was like, I don't understand it. Like, why do people do that? It was like, it's stupid. Why go up and try and eliminate the person who's trying to eliminate someone? Just help them eliminate the other person. It was like, it's just, it's just dumb. It's stupid. And we kind of got to agree with him. I really can't fault him for that comment. I mean, my friend did say, like, they did it during the women's when it happens a lot during the men's. And it was trying to, like, maybe, like, make the women seem a bit stupid. And to be fair, that is a good point. But Corey Gray's point still stands. It's like, why? Why do it? But, yeah, and, like, you get to the last three, and it's Asuka who's come out of, like, clown makeup thing. I think she's reinventing herself a bit. Uh, Liv Morgan and Rhea. And for some reason, they all end up on the apron. I don't know why. And then you've got Rhea in the middle, Liv one side, and Asuka the other. And she goes, Asuka goes to spit the mist in Raya's face and she ducks and it hits Liv and Liv's like oh god oh my eyes and then obviously Asuka's distracted and ends up getting knocked off and then there's a little bit of a scuffle and Raya's like hanging on like for dear life trying not to get eliminated Liv comes over and she's like oh I can't see you properly and whacking at her hands because she's just doing it by touch and Raya lifts her legs up and just head scissors um, Liv and she just smacks off the floor and it was a really good elimination but yeah she was the longest sort of longest surviving woman in the match you had Gunther who was the longest for the men and them two came off really strong but why have an Iron Woman win but then the Iron Man doesn't you just like you could have done like both at the same time which again should have been Cody because now it's, you just look at it and you're like uh. um, and then we jump into the important bit where it's the universal title WWE undisputed universal title match between Roman and Kevin Owens uh, Roman comes down with just Paul Heyman and Sami Zayn. Obviously, Kevin Owens comes down on his own, and there's just tension there. Like, you, like throughout the whole match, you can see Sami just like, oh, oh, I don't know what to, like. I want to root for my best friend, but I need to root for the tribal chief, and he's just he's just torn, and he doesn't know what to do, and Roman's like. Watch this. Watch, watch what I'm doing to him, and Paul Heyman's trying to be like, "Yeah, come on, look, you know, watch, watch, see what's happening. You need to pick a side. You need to make a decision. You need to decide what you're gonna do." And to be fair, it's a pretty straight match. Um, again, it was just two guys battering the crap out of each other, and the there was a really mad spot towards the end where Roman grabs Kevin Owens and throws him back onto the steps but like the jagged steps and he does it twice and he's like whiplashing back and whiplashing back and and Sam is just like there like oh god oh like he doesn't want Kevin Owens to get hurt and then there's a point where they're both outside the ring and Kevin Owens is by Sammy and he's like and Sam is just like, just stay down, just stay down, don't get back up. And Roman spears him through the barrier. And then they get back in the ring. 
after like the step spot and Kevin Owens is kind of like stumbling like this and he's like Ugh. and he's like I think he slaps Roman and Roman just spears him one two three done oh oh there is another point I should uh, make the ref gets knocked down and Roman's like to Sammy get me a chair get me a chair and like Sammy's rushing around trying to find this chair and he gets one from under the ring and he's standing there and he's like what are you waiting for? Give me the chair, give me the chair. And he's kind of hesitating and then he's just like, he throws it in the ring to Roman. Roman's like, about bloody time. Turns around to hit Kevin Owens and I think Owens hits, I think it's a stunner. And obviously Roman kicks out and then I just no, I just wanted to point that out because that was a really that really telling moment in the match and then you get to the end of the match and Kevin's like rolling around on the floor hurt the Usos come out Solo comes out and then they're like and Roman's like this isn't the end of it and then Solo and the Usos are just taking turns just battering the crap out of Kevin Owens and beating him up and and then it gets to a point and uh, I think Roman asks Paul Heyman for some uh, handcuffs and he pulls my fuck like, of course I've got handcuffs I always carry handcuffs and then he pulls another pair out and they like handcuff him to the top rope like that and the Usos just basically have a super kick party better than anything that the Young Bucks would do and they're just hitting him and hitting him and hitting him and he's just hanging and hanging and then Roman gets the chair and he's like and he's about to hit Kevin Owens and Sami Zayn jumps in and he's like no stop and he's like it's done you're done it's like you, you're the tribal chief you're the champion you don't have to do this and Roman's just like yeah you know what I don't and gives the chair to Sami and he's like but you do and Sammy's just like, he's, you can tell Sammy doesn't want to do it. And he's holding this chair. And Roman's just in his face shouting. He was like, this guy doesn't love you. I love you. He's trying to change you. He's trying to ruin everything that you've built over the past, like, nine months or something. And he was like, if you don't want to do it, you can go back to, you can go back to doing all your jackass crap. Which was quite funny. And Sammy's there, and he's holding this chair, and Roman's like, he's crying, he's crying. And Paul Herman turns around, and he's like, what are you doing? There's no crying in the bloodline. And it's just really funny. And they're all stood there. And, like, Roman turns around, and he's in Kevin's face, and he's like, come on, hit him, hit him. And Sammy's just got this chair, and he winds back. And smacks Roman. And that was when, like, the air just got sucked out. And everyone was like... <gasps> it was like, Sammy's finally done it. And everyone's like... Everyone's like... On Sammy's side, chanting his name. And he turns around in the chair. And he's just looking at the rest. He's like, I'm sorry, guys. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. And Roman's just there. And he sat there. And he's like... What the hell just happened? And he's like, which, for Roman, proves a point. Never, ever turn your back on someone with a steel chair. Because he got screwed over by Seth when the shield split up. And here it happens again. And I think the kind of mirrored that kind of like, where Roman's just like, I think that's why Roman got so angry about it. Because he was like, this has happened once before. It's happening again with someone who I thought was my friend. And I think it, I'm, I think it's Jay and he's just stood there and he's going, What have you done? What are you doing? Why have you done that? What is the matter with you? And Sammy just stands there because he knows at some point he's going to get beaten up. And Roman gets up and he's just like, Get him. And they beat the crap out of Sammy. And then I didn't actually notice it until the crowd started chanting for Jay. And they were all like, Jay, Jay, Jay. And he's just stood in the corner and he's just there and he's just like, he just doesn't know what to do. 
and Roman's like, what are you doing? Get involved, get involved, come on. And Jay just slinks out of the ring, walks down to the entranceway and just leaves. And it's... And you just say, oh, your head in your hands, I can't believe all this is happening, I can't believe this is going down now. You were waiting for you were waiting for Sammy to turn, and he finally turns. And and then they they, they just walk off and leave and Kevin's like still hung up by the handcuffs and Sammy Jan's just flat out on the floor. And Roman also he just beats the crap out of him with a chair and it's just and he's shouting at me he's like you're putting a you're putting a I can't remember I was like you're putting a strain on my family it's your fault you come in and you're causing this rift and it's kind of true because he finally wins over Roman he finally wins over Jay and then turns on him but you could see it coming and it was it was just it's just perfect like this whole the whole storyline i think the bloodline was good when it was just the bloodline and then when they added sammy it just added another layer and it's elevated roman it's elevated sammy zane up in the sky like sammy's like it's his character work, he's just, he's funny, he's witty, he's clever, and he's got, like, he got, I mean, he got something stupid, like, Usi over, and the crowd are chanting it and stuff, and it's just, it is the best storyline that I have witnessed in wrestling in a long time. It's better than some TV shows, it's better than some films that I've watched. They've just done it amazingly, and I think it's better than anything the WWE have done in years, and I think it's better than anything that AEW have done. And it's just this is the big we're in this because I showed a vignette, and it was like the different chapters, and I think this is the last chapter, and this is the beginning and the end. I think because you've got to look at like Jay and Jimmy are still the champions. Like, what's Jay gonna do? I feel like they're going to have a tag match and he's going to be like you're good. I don't think Jay will leave the bloodline. I think he'll he'll just cling on and they'll be like you go out there and you win this match. You win it for your tribal chief. Blah blah blah. And I think he'll just walk away from Jimmy. And then I think it sets up a match between Jimmy and Jay. It sets up a match possibly between Sammy and Roman even Jay and Roman. There's so many combinations. And then the biggest issue with this is, is it's obviously going to end at Mania, but is it going to end with Cody finally destroying the bloodline? Because he hasn't been in it at all. He's only just come back, and I just, I think if he's the one that ends the bloodline, it, it ruins the story. It gives it a, a like a sour taste in your mouth, like at the end, and. I don't know, I just I just feel like it shouldn't have been Cody. I feel like I would have had Gunther. Imagine him and him and like Imperium destroying the bloodline. Uh, I just don't think Cody should be the one to end it. Like if Kevin Owens can't do it and Seth Rollins can't do it and Brock bloody Lesnar can't do it, why would Cody Rhodes be able to do it? I feel like Roman will have like a split match. I think he'll end up dropping both titles to different people. Maybe someone costs him the title in the second. Maybe he loses it, loses one of the titles to Sammy, and then he, en- he ends up Maybe Jay costs him the other title to bring it back round and completely tie it up and neatly in a bow. Um, but yeah, the match for me, 9 out of 10. Actually, I'll be honest with you, you know what? 10 out of 10. I think the story and the ring psychology elevated it and it was just fantastic. Um, 
Yeah. I mean, overall, the Rumble was an 8 out of 10. I th- I c- the two middle matches were a bit... And they had a stupid concert for like, Hardy, which they could have put the tag title match there. I feel like they shouldn't have had the men's Rumble go on first. Either. But that's just me. But yeah, the bloodline is... like I only really watch clips and then tune in for the... Um, pay-per-views but I think I'm going to be paying a lot more close attention to it because I want to see what happens I'm re- I really want to know what happens or even if it's like Sammy maybe like a match between the Usos Kevin Owens and Sami Zayn for the tag titles Jay walks out and Kevin and Sammy take the tag titles I think that could be a very real possibility. But we'll see. Don't know what they've got planned, but I hope they end it properly and well. And I hope it isn't ended by Cody. Because as fantastic as Cody Rhodes is as a wrestler, as a character, it's he's boring, he's bland and he's plain. It's all about, oh, I'm doing it for the Rhodes name, I'm doing it for my dad and... I did like the fact that in in the rumble against Gunther, he used Shattered Dreams, where he just booted him between the legs in the corner. That was quite fun, but I just don't see him as the person to end it. And yeah. So take away from this, Rare Ripley is immense. Gunther is fantastic. He he really showed he can be a top major player. I think he should stay heel. And to be honest, I think he should have won the Rumble. Cody won the Rumble, but I hope, as I said, I hope he ain't the one that ends the bloodline. Um, then going into Bray Wyatt storyline needs to it needs it needs a spark. It needs something big to happen to push the story forward because they need to start kicking on now because the whole LA night thing was just it just seemed rubbish and it just it just seemed to in the middle of the rumble was just like oh let's further the Bray Wyatt storyline without anything actually happening and stuff needs to happen now Alexa needs to just snap and turn I think she could have done that in the rumble to be fair I think they could have had Bianca against anyone else and then have like a point where Lex is in the ring and like all of a sudden everything stops the thing shown on the screen she's like well what the hell lights go down lights come back up and she's just flat, flat, flat in the ring and then she gets eliminated I think you could have done that and it would have furthered the storyline more than it did against Bianca. Um, Yeah, also, Sammy finally turned. Jay's possibly turning. That storyline is just... It's like it's like a really good soap opera. Like a really dramatic one and I've got to know what happens next. Um, So, yeah. Overall, pretty good rumble. I enjoyed it. I'm sure a lot of other people did. But yeah, well, that's the end of my video. That's just my take on the Royal Rumble on its happenings. Um, as I said, if you did enjoy my ramblings, because I had a plan in my head and then I just end up rambling, I've probably forgotten about 10 things that I wanted to mention. Um, also, the Banger Bros are awesome. I love them as a tag team. And I love the way they interconnect, like, in the Rumble as well. They were just... They saved each other. They never tried to go, oh, cheeky elimination or anything. They stuck together as a team, and it was fantastic. Um, but, yeah. Like, comment, subscribe, follow my Twitch for more wrestling goodness and more video game goodness. Um... Yeah, as I said, I hope you enjoyed watching. Thank you very much, guys. 
and I shall see you guys again soon.